Yes, 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 y'all. Peace, peace, world. Welcome to the Cliff Notes Podcast Live. We live in Pioneer Square, Portland, Oregon, in the Welcome Dome. So, so dope to be here with my family, the numbers. We in here doing uh, doing great things in downtown Portland. If you in the Portland metro area and you checking us out on a Twitch stream or um, you know anywhere else that you might be checking out the stream, you should come through, man. We're gonna be here for several hours. Uh, I got a couple dope interviews lined up. Really, really excited for tonight, man. So yo, this is the second uh, this is the second episode, the second live episode of the Cliff Nose Podcast, and really, really feel honored and blessed to do this. Shout out to like I said, my people at the numbers, the numbers podcast network is where you'll be able to check this this joint out, man. Um, I got to give a shout out since we get off just off top, man. So like I said, big ups to the numbers for supporting the Cliff Nose Podcast. Big, up, big ups to um, Acapella Apparel for being a, co- a contributor and supporter of the Cliff Nose Podcast. My people at Five Seven Collective, and of course X Ray FM, man. So these are all the people who you know, who who support the situation. Um, And then, of course, big ups to my guy, DJ Ambush, holding this down (laughs) on the ones and two. What up, B? Man, I've been looking forward to this joint. Come on, bro. Come on, It's a pleasure, as always, sharing any stage or microphone situation with you. Come on, man. So, yo, this is my second time doing a situation here at the Welcome Dome. And um, last week, it was my first time here in the Welcome Dome. Had a chance to to hold it down with my guy, DJ Ambush. As we did the the, the bodega situation, no request. It was really, really dope. People was in here dancing. It was really hype, man. And, you know, we we hear you. We see y'all making comments. (laughs) We know what y'all want, so we definitely... Definitely working on putting together uh, sort of the next the next level yeah. of the bodega situation yeah. with your guy DJ Cliff and DJ Ambush. So. Yo, like coming off of that, I was like, do we just need to just call the party? No requests. And just Come like, on, bro. I think I that think thing was major, bro. That was super fun, bro. It was super fun. So we gonna we we that it's in the works. I'm just say that it's in the works, man. <laughs> but keep making noise and let us know that y'all wanna wanna rock with us, man. We got people pulling in. <laughs> I got my acapella fam in the building. What's good? Good, man. Really good. So, all right, man, let's get into it. So, like I said, I'm really excited to do this for the second time. Um, just hyped to have an opportunity to talk to to my first guest, someone who I have um, been a fan of for, for a number of years, and I've watched his movement. And it's crazy because I was talking to him um, as we were getting ready to do this, and I was like, bruh. Every time I look up, you scheduling something else, man. <laughs> this dude be putting in work. Um, but without any further ado, man, help me bring to the stage Mr. Tyrone Hendricks. Hey. What up, what up, what up? Hey. My guy, my guy. Yo, so like I said, this is really dope to be able to uh, to chop it up with this, with this individual, man. Someone who obviously well celebrated. <laughs> I know a little bit of the story, but that's one of the dope things about the Clip Notes podcast is I get to hear the rest of the story. I mean, so um, we were talking, I said, we were talking a little bit off air, man. But first off, I always just try to check in with people, man. Say, it's like, how you doing, bro? Man, bless. um, You know, uh, still a lot of craziness going on in this world, man. You know, we got to pray for them families for this shooting that happened today, man. You know, it's. Blessed to be here, but, you know, it's still just sad to hear about all them, you know, all these crazy things that's going on, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we just got to pray for each other, keep our minerals together, you know what I'm saying? And like you said, just check in with each other. Yeah, If bro. it's just a simple text message, you know, we can't get to call everybody, but right. sometimes just, man, how you doing? Yep. Sis, how you doing? You know, yep. just kind of check in and make sure that, you know, we're doing okay. You no know what I'm saying? Because we no still, we're still in the midst of something, but we're coming out on the other end of it, but, you know, it's still a lot of... Still a lot of crazy things happening. Bro. Yeah, bro. You yeah. know what, man? And thank you, thank you for for for, for bringing that up. Because as I was thinking about it today, coming through, and I was like, ah, you know, what energy do I want to come in? And and I don't want to be insensitive to the fact that, bro, we talking about kids, kids. We talking about children. You know, innocent what I'm saying? babies who yeah. just went to school to 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 learn and to be kids, um, who who now are not going to come home. You know what I mean? We talking about an adult. Yeah, An educator yeah. who's not gonna make it home because of some foolishness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I'm, I'm a father of five, and I just could not imagine getting that phone call. You Word. know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. You know, I tell my kids all the time, y'all bury me, not me bury you. Word up. You know? Word up. That's what's up, man. <laughs> That's so, the I live by. So. I love what you said, though, man. We got we to gotta hug on our loved ones, man. Yeah. We got to appreciate the moments and the times that we have because tomorrow's not, the next moment is not promised for yeah. any of us, bro. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. Prayers out to, to those families, man, um, who, are, who are left behind to, you know, to bury these children, yeah. which is sad. Um, 
But yo, bro, like I was saying, man, it's, it's, really, it's really dope for me to have an opportunity to chop it up with you. Um, so I was talking to you before we started, man. Like, I always think about my first interaction and my first awareness of cats, man. And mm -hmm. so uh, when I moved to Portland, and shout out to Tony Ozier, I went to, um, I went to, I don't remember if it was called the Dookie Jam at that time, but that's where I met Tony, and I had an opportunity to see artists. And then um, the uh, the Doodoo Funk All Stars project came out, yep. <laughs> and I got to I got to see your name. And then once I recognized your name, I would constantly see your name playing throughout the city. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first time I got to see you play live that I remember anyway, um, outside of that, is at the Portland Black Music festival which was years ago oh yeah over the what's it oh, at the mission street yeah, the mission, yeah. at the mission street um bruh you are you are an amazing artist an amazing musician yeah, Kat. thank you so much appreciate it yeah for sure for yeah. sure so like in terms of your musical your musical story man like where did it where did it start with you in terms of in terms of artistry like were you always a drummer uh, according to my mama, yes. <laughs> in the womb. Yep. Yeah. Beating her pots and pans. So, you That's know. what's up, bro. Thank you, mom, for letting me do that. I turned out to be something. All right? <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, bro. And then you, like, you've obviously released a lot of, a lot of material, mm -hmm. but was it always a, um, a thought for you that you wanted to be a recording artist, that you wanted to make music to share with, with, with people? Um, it had always been back there in the back of my mind to do something like that, um, but I never thought I would be in a position to make that happen. Yeah. Um, and a lot of, big, like I said, big shout out to Tony Ozier, um, Farnell Newton, Stephen Swatkins. Mm -hmm. um, they were very instrumental in telling me like, you know, man, you're producing when you're on the drums. You do yeah. realize that, right? And yeah. they would always say that to me like, no, bro, like you're running the band and like you hear things in your head, like you're a producer. Like, dude, you need to, you know, come up with a record. Because yeah. we'd be in rehearsal, and I would, like, change a part to a song. And they'd be like, dude, no, no, that's producer stuff that you're doing. So, yeah. you know, they're like, you're not just a drummer. You're, like, a producer back there. Yeah. So that puts you in a whole nother category. Because you have cats that just play an instrument. Right. Then you have cats that produce from that instrument and can make the whole band sound good. Yeah. Or if you hear something that's not right, you can stop it. Be like, oh, hold up, let's rewind that back and, you know, fix that part. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So they basically told me, you know, like, Dude, like you're, you're doing it. <laughs> you may not realize it, but it's happening. That's what's so, up, bro. Yeah. And it's got to be good to have people in your circle of influence to sort of identify those things. That sometimes we're in our blind spot. That yeah. we don't, or just like I'm just, I'm just doing me. I don't, you know, you don't really necessarily see that. Mm -hmm. And to have someone point that out has got to be encouraging. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And uh, like I said, like Tony Ozier, he's definitely always, you know, you know, he calls me Noomsy. <laughs> he calls, but he's like Noomsy, man. If you start singing. It's gonna be something else. <laughs> so that's what he's been pushing me on. Like, no, you gotta sing. Oh, and word. you're Anderson Peck, right? Dude. Oh, that's like, what's up. Bro, you can do it. You can do it, you know. So is that that's what you're working on now? No, I mean, I'm getting there, you know, the soulful Sunday is I kind of been taking control of the mic and singing little backgrounds. Okay. Um, but you know, seeing my um, you know, seeing, you know, one of my heroes here in Portland, Brian Foxworth, yeah, actually just like been doing it for years. It's a little little uncomfortable, <laughs> you know, but yeah. I think every Sunday as I keep going, it's gonna, it's getting there. That's you know what what's saying? up, bro. And recently, I went on tour with the Portland Cello Project. Yeah, uh, I've been playing with them since twenty like twenty seventeen, mm -hmm. and actually, I actually sing a song in the set. Oh, word! Yeah, okay. The song "No Surprises" from Radiohead. Which okay, I had never heard of Radiohead, but I ended up playing like a whole record. But yeah, "No Surprises" like became my song. Like, that's what's <laughs> I was up. I just fooling around in rehearsal, and it's like. You're singing that song we're doing for the show. <laughs> no doubt. So yeah, I remember I remember seeing um, seeing the post about about that from the from the most recent tour with mm -hmm. the Portland Cello Project. Yeah. So like you said, you've been doing that for a number of years. Yeah. Um, this last tour, you guys um, nor primarily Northwest. Primarily, um, yeah, it was Northwest at first. Mm -hmm. Went through like Bend, uh, Yakima, Seattle. Um, I'm trying to remember one more spot, but we came home and then we left for like Montana, Idaho, right. Wyoming, yeah. um, Wisconsin, Indiana, and Chicago, and then came back. But that's what's up. Yeah, bro. so it was like that was the first, that literally was the first tour since the pandemic yeah. Yeah. Um, that we went on. So it was kind of crazy seeing like you can see some of the spots that were like you can see that pandemic just did not exist. Oh, wow. For, for the people out there, they just like didn't care. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, then yeah. you can see the spots where people like, all right, a little bit more reserved. So mm -hmm. it, it, it the energy was definitely there. People definitely are coming out to see live music and right. are happy to, you know, that it's coming, that is pretty much back. Yeah. But yeah, you can still tell in certain parts of the country. They were like, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because you got to see that from a distance through social media and this mm-hmm. and the third where you have different areas who, who look at the situation differently. Um, as, a, as an artist and performer, it's funny, I was talking to um, my guy Molly who was here from, uh, from Minneapolis area. He was here with, um, with Brother Ali. Mm-hmm. And I was doing an interview with him and he was like, bro, like, no disrespect, but I just need to ask, like, are you, are you straight with the vaccination? Because I really can't get sick. Because if I get sick and then I take it back to the headliner, it's a situation. So yeah. you can see how those things can impact performers. Mm-hmm. So as an artist, like, how has it been for you now coming back and being amongst people and, you know, just being exposed to more people now? Is that something that's in your head at all? Um, it's still in my head a little bit. It's still a little caution, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you know, because people are like, I'm not a, you know, I'm a hugger. I'm like, okay, let's, <laughs> let's just react on that for a little bit. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. And, you know, I don't know you like that. You know what I'm saying? If I know you, we all good. But if, yeah, yeah. if I don't really know you like that, let's, right. let's just relax. So, right, you know, right. but, I, but I, I feel the enthusiasm because a lot of people, you know, people weren't with their family or friends. You yeah. know, you're a little isolated, man. Yeah. And God never meant for us to be isolated. Say that. <laughs> that was Say never that, his bro. purpose. Word up. Word <laughs> never up. was his purpose. Yeah. <laughs> so. and which is crazy because you see the a part of, I think, the mental and emotional impact of the pandemic mm-hmm. is that, that isolation that people feel. Yeah. And you have these layers of separation that are built in. And, you know, a lot of people have struggled with that. So it's nice that we can be out amongst, amongst people in person again. Yeah. I think it's really dope. Um, so... Uh, like I said, man, I, I got to know got to know you from a distance. Saw the music that you made, and then just being in the community would talk. You know, yeah, you know, Tyrone's playing here. You know, you know, Tyrone played with this one and with that one. Like <laughs> what? So um, I, we got We got to name drop a little bit, bro. Okay. You right. So um, some of the some let's see some of the individuals that you have played with that might be familiar to our listeners. Uh, <laughs> well, I definitely say um, when I moved here in 2004, um, I got introduced to Liv Warfield um, in 2005, yes. Yes. and uh, I joined her project, and I was pretty much off and on with her for about the last, yeah, 15 years. Amazing artist. Um, so Amazing I played on vocalist. both of her projects, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, in the midst of that, ran into Mike Phillips, mm-hmm. um, who moved here. Um, in about 2008, 2009. Yeah. Um, and Mike was very instrumental in getting me um, the Stevie Wonder gig um, back in uh, 20, yeah, like 2010, 2011, yeah, that yeah. time frame. Yeah. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Just so, so people I just want to run that down. We're going we to keep going. Okay. Liv Warfield, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mike Phillips, yeah. Stevie Wonder. Uh huh. Just want to let that sit for a minute. <laughs> okay, let's keep it pushing. Let's keep it pushing. And then, and then through Liv, she got put on with uh, MPG. Yeah. Um, and literally in 2013, got the call to go to Paisley Park. Um, and I didn't know what I was going to Paisley for. It was yeah. just an email like, here's your information, show up. Yeah. And uh, Lily uh, had to go in and learn about 40 of Prince's songs in like wow. a 10-day span. And uh, we ended up doing like a city winery New York run with the MPG. Oh, wow. Yeah, so Prince came out like about three of the nights. And, okay. Yeah, so it was pretty... Pretty intense. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. So when you talk about sort of the um, just just that journey, and it, I would imagine that that happened pretty quickly. That 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 mm-hmm. that transition from artist to artist to artist yeah. was it? Did it feel like a whirlwind? Did it feel like nah? This is just this is me being an artist, being a music, being a musician. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was. It was kind of being a musician. I'm not like a very starstruck person, mm-hmm. um, but I will say Stevie is the only person I definitely felt an aura. Oh wow! In the room, yeah. When he walked in, yeah. I couldn't say that about Prince, yeah, yeah. But Stevie, I can say that about him. It was definitely a different aura when that guy walked in. Like that's what's up. Yeah, bro. like it's I call it the holy hush. <laughs> it could be a mad conversation, and then all of a sudden he walks in, just, just quiet. Just quiet. Oh, just absolute snap, silence. Yeah. He's, he's one of those guys. And That's I've heard crazy. that like with Michael Jordan, people like, like I've heard that before, but I was like, I've never experienced it. And first time you walked in the room, like, I see what they're talking about. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. So now as you're as you're continuing on on your musical journey, mm-hmm. the impact of having an opportunity to be in a creative space with someone with all of the folk that you that you mentioned who are great artists in their own right. Mm. But um, I, I bring up Stevie just because he is an iconic figure yeah. for so many different reasons, for the music that he's written, for the impact that the music that he's written has had and, com- and continues to have on our communities when mm. we think about um, his impact on culture and awareness of culture. Um, what, what, if any, impact has that had on you creatively as you're creating, as you're producing? 
Um, the major impact is is just just seeing their work ethic and the way they they the way they hear things. Yeah, you know what I'm saying it definitely you know intrigues the ear and you know I just sit there like a sponge and just soak it up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying and yeah. you know that that that's you talking about half a century of just right music. Yeah. you know what I'm saying a lot of stuff I've never heard or you probably have never heard of Stevie like. I didn't know he did that song. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He made, like, I just did a tribute at uh, State 722. Mm-hmm. Come to find out, he had made a song in Italian. Word. Yeah, he was in love with an Italian woman and made a song. And he sang it in Italian, the whole song. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. So, so it's like with music, you just keep finding out j- hidden gems all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I tell my kids, they, they want to be in music. I'm like, look, kids, the best thing is never get complacent because you're always going to find out something new about music that you didn't know. So it's just so much history. They, we can't comprehend it. So you just keep digging and you just keep finding new things yeah. all the time. So, yeah. you know. That's so dope, bro. It's, it's That's crazy. so, so amazing, man. It's like six degrees of separation. Yes. Like being in a room with someone who was in a room with, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's just, that's so, so dope. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the, your creative process now, you've talked about um, really being a producer and, and having an ear for and then creating projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know how many projects you have that are, that, that are out right now? Um, right now, currently the projects I have is uh, Rhythm on Life Volume 1 mm-hmm. and Rhythm on Life Volume 2. Okay. I've played on so many albums, I can't... <laughs> I, it's, I play on a million records. So. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so I'm digging through those, that's going to be something. You know, yeah. I, I, uh, my friend was saying, man, your website, you got to get a discography. I'm like, good luck with that. Right. <laughs> it's going to take us a while to figure that out. Yeah. I, I, probably, I think I've probably played on over 200 different records. That's amazing, yeah. bro. That's amazing. So, do, so, so far in your musical journey, um, you mentioned sort of feeling that, 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 that change in the room with Stevie, when Stevie walked in. Are there other events, other... Um, other moments, whether it be playing live or being in the studio or just in your creative process, things that sort of uh, stand out to you thus far in your musical journey? Um, I definitely would say um, when we did the Jimmy Fallon show with Liv, Mm -hmm. um, that was a very big moment. Yeah. Um, Definitely, I would say my first gospel recording was a very big moment because the guy that was on bass, Joel Smith, who uh-huh. in the gospel world is the godfather of drums and bass. Okay. Um, who, you know, I don't try to say I idolize somebody, but if it's any close to anybody I idolize, yeah, it yeah. would be Joel Smith. That's um, what's up. And he was the Hawkins. Uh, he was related oh, to the Hawkins. Yeah, so okay. all those records with the Hawkins, he's the man on the drums and sometimes on the bass. And happens that I'm from Oakland. He was from Oakland, too. So yeah, yeah. it was, you know, so to have him on bass, I'm on drums. Yeah. It was like... <laughs> wow like I'm playing with the actual like the man yeah yeah you know? yeah, yeah. So that's what's that up that definitely bro. was a highlight and I think uh, seeing Carter Buford mm-hmm. for the first time with the Dave Matthews band at the Gorge okay was pretty intense also that's crazy yeah. bro yeah. so um, so as I mentioned man one of the uh, one of my one of my people man my family uh, is in the room DJ Renz uh, <laughs> of Acapella Apparel so at the first um live recording of the Cliff Notes podcast when uh-huh. we're talking I was like yo man I'm excited to have Tyrone on and you just talking about how humble you are and, and, and like the people that I know that you've played with and uh, he mentioned yeah and, you know his family lineage who he's related to and I was like who's he related to <laughs> and then felt really silly when I, when I learned who you're actually related to so you are you're kin of like one of the most celebrated Northwest artists ever yeah Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. <laughs> the guy right there. Yes. Bruh. That's 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 kind of dope. Yeah. So like just coming up, like th- obviously this is just this is just family. Mm-hmm. But was there a time where where you like you recognized that oh like yeah, that's my kin. Um so growing up in Oakland and growing up in church, mm-hmm. I wasn't I heard of him, but I wasn't into him like right, that, you know right. what I'm saying? Because people here, you know, you dated to Jimmy, so you know you gotta. I'm like, no, <laughs> his musical journey right. is totally opposite from mine. Right, right. Um, you know, he's considered the greatest rock and roll guitarist of all time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Changed basically changed the game of how guitarists uh, approach things. Right. Um, it wasn't until I moved here in uh, 2004. Mm-hmm. Um, had a friend, uh, Nehemiah Booker. Um, yeah, that I think he was, Nehemiah. Yeah, I think he was uh, somehow he was. They had like a gospel label or something like that, uh-huh. um, and he was like, "Dude, like I know 
the family. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. But, you know, and like he put me in contact. And I think I talked to Bob Hendricks. I think he's passed on now, but I talked uh -huh. to him. And, uh -huh. you know, he's like, yeah, I've heard you're, you're a drummer down in Northwest. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I, for me, I thought it was dope just because, you know, my kids. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, you know, because I have, I have five kids, two girls, three boys. But, mm -hmm. you know, I know my boys is really like, they're in, they're, all in on the music thing and yeah, yeah. I thought it would be dope for them to know their lineage, you know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I never was really um, following the name, you know, like not following the name, but like letting the name like dictate how my career was, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. And I like, Cause a lot of people, a lot of bands I played with, they were like announcing, oh, and Jimi Hendrix cousin on drums. Mm -hmm. I'm like, y'all don't have to do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, right, 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 right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That I'll let my talent speak for itself. You know no what I'm doubt. saying? So, no doubt. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty great. I mean, and it's funny because like one time I wore this wig at a duty form gig, and uh -huh. they was like, "Dude, you look just like him. <laughs> you look just like him." Because they say it's all up in just all up in here. Right, so, right, right. Well, yeah. I'm gonna say this, bro. Like I said, so much of what I've known of you, learned of you, is really um, related to what you have done in your own right. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's just recently that that I learned that um, you know that that Jimmy Shakin. Everybody on camera is going to get to see this. Everybody who's listening to this, you don't realize what I'm doing right now. This is some behind the scenes stuff. This is why you should come to the live situations so you get to see these really these really unique things that happen. So something very unique just happened that you, no, I'm tripping. Um, so uh, the other thing that I said to you, Brett, uh, when, we were, when we were off, now I, gotta, I actually got to pull up my Instagram okay. because I want to run through some stuff. <laughs> And I need my Instagram in order to run through because there's some stuff, B. <laughs> so I was I was messing with you, bro, and I was saying it's like, yo, every time, every time I pull up, it's like there's another another situation that you're that you're doing. You stay busy, bro. Hey, it's the only way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about we talked about um you were touring with the Portland Cello Project, which is which is really dope. Mm -hmm. But you have um a number of events that are coming up. So everybody who's listening to this live, this is going to be um, really cool for you to hear about. One of the things that's coming up this weekend, um, it's as things are opening up and things are coming back. Um, TEDx Portland is coming back. Yeah, ten this year weekend. anniversary. Yeah. Ten year anniversary, which is which is really really huge, man. And big ups to um, to all the uh, all that they've done in terms of bringing people to platforms yeah. and sharing platforms. Um, you get an opportunity to do something pretty special this weekend. What's yeah. what's that going to be about? So uh, basically, um, they uh, hit me up about doing um, a Jimi Hendrix tribute. Okay. Um, and they have uh, the photographer. Uh, he has a legendary Jimi has a legendary fire lighting the guitar on fire. Uh, Ed Caffrey. He's gonna. He took that picture, um, and he's gonna be in the building. Oh, word! Yeah, and he, it's a book uh, that they gave me this with all these epic photos that oh, he took. Snap. That's what's um, up. Yeah, and it's like amazing. I have a good friend, Jimmy Russell, that's gonna be playing guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, Andre Sapata is gonna be on bass. Okay, and then I'll be joined by my son, Takilo Hendrix, on percussion. Oh, word! And drums too. Yeah. So. Okay. That's what's up. A little bit of a family affair. That's what. That's got to feel good, bro. Yeah, but it's that's gonna really got to feel good. Crazy energy. Uh, yeah. We been. We went in the studio the other day and just like ran over the set, and I'm just like, I'm real like pumped to do it. So no doubt. Yeah. No so. doubt. So information on that. People want to tap in. They want to attend. How can they? How can they tap into that? This um, they can go to. They should be able to go to TedTalk.com uh, and uh, get tickets. And is that held at the Motor Center? Okay. Um, and there should be a link also. I think okay. it should be live streaming and all that good stuff also. But okay. Yeah. It's, yeah, this thing's gonna be insane. That's like, what's yeah, up, bro. Yeah, they, they showed me like a little screenshot of the stage. Yeah. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's gonna be what's up. So. No doubt. <laughs> yeah. So you have that going on. And mm -hmm. then also this weekend, um, it's the first of 2022, a series that you started a while ago mm -hmm. um, at the house. Yeah, my front porch. That's crazy, brother. Front porch concert. Yeah. So, like, the idea of doing that, like, where did that even, where that idea, that concept come from? So, when uh, me and my wife, uh, we got to the place we're at, we were just sitting on the porch this one day, mm -hmm. and we have this, we live right across from McKenna Park in North uh, Portland. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, we got the park, we're on the corner, and I'm like, I'm looking at the porch, I'm like, I got to actually put a band up here. <laughs> and she was like, you know what, we could. And yeah. We just kind of put our brainchild together. And I got with uh, my good friend, uh, Eric Turner. He goes to my church. Mm -hmm. um, he cooks some of the best brisket, ribs, and chicken. And, you know, we put him in the garage. He cooks. And I set up the sound system, get bands out, go fly to the neighborhood, hit yeah, the yeah. social media. People come out. We shut down the street, 
have a good time. That's what's up, bro. Got a good time, you know. So, so that's gonna be this this first one of 2022 is gonna be yeah, Sunday. Yeah, May 29th. May 29th. Yeah, five um, to eight p.m. Okay, yeah. anybody can come through. Family oh, yes. friendly, the whole nine. Come on, bring your appetite. Get ready to dance. That's so. what's up, bro. <laughs> so that's really cool. And you started doing that how many years ago now? I believe in 2019, like right before the pandemic hit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Which is crazy because you were also able to do some things during the pandemic yeah. via streaming. Yeah. Which is which is which is really cool to be able to create something and then be able to take advantage of what was available to all of us during that time, which is continuing to to stay connected to your mm -hmm. audience, but then also provide an outlet for people who were kind of struggling through that yeah. time. And I got so many people; they were sending me cards like, "I just needed this so much because I just been in my house. Yeah, you know, I hadn't went anywhere. So yeah. they were like, we 'We're outside. You know, I can find my little corner, take my mask off, and just like enjoy myself. Yeah, you know what I'm saying so. You know, and that's pretty much what you know." My mom told me a long time ago, she said, You're, you have a community spirit about you. Mm. I didn't really know what that meant at the time. But yeah, she's yeah. like, yeah, you, have, you can bring people together. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And that's, you know, when you hear that, it can be a little scary. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to abuse that, that, that gift that's been given to you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because God gives us all a gift. Mm -hmm. But you can either do it for the good <laughs> or you can do it for the bad. Say that, bro. So <laughs> Say that. Yeah, I mean it is a that is a um, it is a heavy thing, and big ups to you for recognizing that and, mm -hmm. and, and choosing to choosing the path that you have chosen, bro. Yeah. I think that that's huge. Um, okay, so some other some other things that, we, that I definitely want to let people know about. Um, so I just seen you must have just posted this one because I just seen <laughs> this one, uh, Mookie and the Jazz Cats. Yeah, so what's up with that? Uh, so those are good, some good friends of mine, uh, Don, Donna Jones, uh, Charlie Brown. Um, because I'm going to be doing the TED Talk, um, I normally have this event at uh, Alberta Street Pub uh -huh. um, called Lunch and Soul every Saturday from noon to 2 o'clock. Okay. And it's various artists from around the local scene. If some national acts come in that I know, I try to get them on the gig also. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's, I got it from playing with uh, Reggie, Houston, Reggie Houston and the uh, late great Janice Stroggins. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot what the place was, but it's not too far from here. But it, we used to play like a noon to two gig yeah. it was like, kind of like a New Orleans style deal oh, word. brunch you know what I'm saying so yeah. it's like I was like I want to do something like this because people you know they Saturday morning you know you had a long week right, right, right. you might want to come out drink some mimosas mm -hmm. eat a little po' boy sandwich or something right. like that you right, know? Right, right. And, and enjoy some music <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know? yeah so that's you know, what's up. Just creating a vibe. Just creating a vibe. That's, That's what's it. up. Bro. You know, I was um, I had an opportunity to to connect with you and some other um, distinguished gentlemen from the from the city, and mm -hmm. we met at Alberta Street Pub. And and during that meeting, I had a chance to find out like some really cool things in terms of the history of Alberta Street yeah. Pub. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Alberta Street Pub was one of um, as things were changing in the area, it was one of the uh, singular black-owned businesses in that area as things were changing. Is that correct? Yeah. From the history I've been told of the place, yeah. Yeah. You know, I was, yeah. Like I said, I didn't get here until 2004, but yeah. that's what I was told you know, yeah. by a lot of people. My, my brother, Tim Phillips, that um, um, works there with me, um, mm -hmm. he uh, basically told me the history because he grew up on Alberta, and he was like, dude, like, what we're doing is bringing that vibe back because yeah. it's definitely been a void that's needed to be filled in the city. I feel since the candlelight uh, closed. Yeah. In the candlelight, you know, like uh, my man, Uncle Uncle Andy Stokes, you know, mm -hmm. he's like, what, number eight or something like that on the billboards right now. I've just seen that, yeah. 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 But he cut his teeth at the at the candlelight every Sunday night. He was yeah. getting it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that place was packed. Yeah. But Monday through Sunday was always some kind of live music going there at night. Yeah. And we really have not had a venue like that mm -hmm. in Portland since they shut down and then I just want to bring that back and do it at the Alberta Street Pub. Yeah, that's so. what's up, man. Alberta Street Pub is obviously on Al Al Alberta Street. Yeah. That's why it's called the Alberta <laughs> Street Pub, right? Um, and then, and just a, just a lineup of, of events that, that go on there. You also mentioned um, that you do Soulful Sundays there. Yeah, Soulful Sundays. Yeah. So um, talk to me about Soulful Sundays because that's something that you've been doing for a minute. Yeah, Soulful Sundays, we uh, we started in February. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's just a vibe, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, I've been fortunate to have some of the best musicians and guest artists come through and just do their thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, DJ Rez over here, he's cutting on the ones and twos yes, every, <laughs> every Sunday for me, yeah. giving them the cut. So as soon as this band stop, the party still keep going. That's you know what's what I'm saying? Up. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a place to just come on out, you know, before the week start, man, shake everything off and let's go. That's you know? what's up. So, yeah. you know, because when you go to the East Coast and the Midwest, these places are 
flourishing like that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. like, we have to, they kind of put Portland in this, this thing of like a folk city or a singer songwriter. And I'm like, that is absolutely not true. Right, right. The soul scene, hip hop scene, yeah. is something fierce. Yeah, yeah. And I can, I'll put us against anybody in the world. Mm-hmm. And it's been proven because the soul scene overseas in the UK for yeah. Portland yeah. since like 2015 has been crazy. Yeah. You know, yeah. like artists from here go over there and yeah. cut their teeth big time. Yeah. Like, because they'd be like, what is, what's in the water in Portland where all this sound is coming out? Because yeah. you got Jared Lawson, mm-hmm. Uncle Andy, mm-hmm. um, Pleasure came and hit, uh, came out, uh, hit, hit the airways a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tahara Memory, mm-hmm. um, Ronnie Wright, the B Speak Project, mm-hmm. Chris Turner did his project, Ariana Ward did her project. Yep. It's a lot of things happening, including what I did, yep. with my it, project. And then they find out I pretty much played with everybody right. on it. Tony Ozier, yep. Farnell, they, yep. it's a gang of us over there really doing some big things. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, what is going on in Portland? You know what I'm saying? And so they're trying to figure like, well, why is like when they come here, like, where, do, where's, where are the people not right. supporting? You know what I'm right. saying? Right. And I said, I don't think it's not that they're not supporting. I don't think the word is really hitting them or pushing their spirit the way it needs to. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we just got to keep going and today understand. This exactly. Is, this is exactly. where it's at. You know? you know, it's funny that you say that. So I was talking to, I was talking to my guy, J57, uh, from New York, mm-hmm. producer, rapper, uh, Brown Bag All-Stars, J-Mo, All-Stars and J-Mo Gang. And um, he was, he kind of ran down the same thing when it comes to the hip hop scene in Portland. Mm-hmm. He was like, yeah, you know, there's so much talent in Portland. Yeah. Um, I remember talking to uh, I was talking to somebody from the East Coast. Same sort of idea. There's so much talent in Portland, and sometimes I wonder if it's a matter of, you know, when you're when you're in the place, you take advantage of the place, right? Mm-hmm. When I say take advantage of it, I mean not advantage. You take it for granted, mm-hmm. and um, that's one of the things that I hope, you know, that we strive to do with the numbers and I strive to do with Cliff Notes is like let the local scene know that there is so much happening here. Yeah in the city that you're in that you don't have to wait to take a vacation to go hear great music or yeah. you don't have to wait for the you know the, the big promotion of the local artists because if they go to Alberta Street on any given night mm-hmm. you never know who might just actually come through and you sit never in know. the band you never know you and never and know. with artists like yourself who have those connections yeah. because you have traveled regionally as well as internationally like you just have those those connections where if somebody's coming to Portland they know where's Tyrone at oh let me pull up. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, and it's crazy because like touring, people be like, where are you from? And I say Portland. They be like, Portland got cats like you that mm-hmm. live there and are playing like that? And mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. 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 I, I know whatever whatever you think, Portlandia, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> that ain't 100% right. true. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that's the first thing people think, voodoo donuts, Portlandia. Mm-hmm. You know? I'm like, mm-hmm. no. It's no. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> um, uh, uh, other things that... Uh, did we so we talked we talked a little bit about lunch and soul as well. Um, you are a recording artist, mm-hmm. which means that aside from playing live, I'm filtering that right now because I'm trying to I'm trying <laughs> to say I'm trying to see what we can or should say. Uh, let me just say you are you are currently recording. Yeah, currently working on new record. music that will be released. Yes, should we just leave it there? Oh no, it's all good. One of the, one of the brothers is coming up next. He's actually okay. Be I didn't first, know we could get into he gonna, that. He's gonna be on the first single. <laughs> I didn't know we could get into that. So so my guy Rashid Jamal man is in the yes, building. Sir. What up, Rashid? <laughs> um, Rashid, I have I have said many times over. I think is one of he's definitely one of my favorite lyricists. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has put out some 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 amazing work, man. Like, what's to connect with you and Rashid? Um, actually, the connect came through uh, I believe like Farnell, Farnell and Tony Ozier. Okay. Uh, when we did the uh, when we just talked about the uh, yeah, Black, Black Music, Music Fest. Expo, yeah, yeah, yeah. So or we, festival, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got his music because he was one of the artists. Yep. Because I had to play for like six artists. Uh, yes, you did. Yeah, so I think he had about three songs. <laughs> right. But in the middle, of one of the songs, me and him had a moment where it was yeah. just drums and him. Yep. And ever since then, we. <laughs> That's what's up, bro. Yeah, and we're just like you like current mates on uh, like the Marmoset because mm-hmm. um, I'm like the only probably like drummer, live drummer on Marmoset. Okay, um, doing the commercials and things of that nature. So yeah. you know, I hit him with some ideas, and yeah. then I was like, "Well, man, I got this song I've been mm-hmm. sitting on with with Ronnie Wright." I'm like, "Bro, mm-hmm. you want to write something to it?" Yeah, sent it to him, and about a week later. He he didn't just have like one verse, he had like two different verses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe it. I believe it's funny. And you know what? It's funny, bro, because you know, when I say I remember, that's one of the that's one of the standout times I remember seeing you play mm-hmm. is at the Black Music Expo yeah. or Festival. Um, it's one of I, I think it might be the first time that I saw Rasheed Ron with a live band. I was gonna talk about this when you come up, Rasheed. Mm-hmm. But but seeing him 
seeing him with a live band it like brought out um, a different um, a different part of what he does creatively mm -hmm. and I think what you just described like when y'all had that moment I yeah. think that's a part of um, a part of what I saw do you feel like that's some of what you know the other artists who were talking about you as a producer that's some of what they were referring to that you you have this ability to bring that out in, 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 a, in a performer yeah they, they definitely say I have my own kind of unique style yeah um, and like I said you you have Drummers that have like amazing chops, like yeah. I can a lot of stuff I can't do. I ain't yeah. about to even attempt to try to do it. Yeah, yeah. But that's kind of where it stops. You have to be musically sensitive to the artist that you're playing behind. Right. Because as a drummer, the chops don't matter. Right. If you ain't keeping, it's still that's still the foundation. The yeah. beat still got to be there. Yeah, yeah. And if you throw a lick in there, that's cool. But yeah, yeah. it still has to make sense. You can't. The singer can't be doing something and then you throw a lick over. <laughs> You know right. what they're doing, right, or you're doing right, like right. a weird break or like a weird off time thing. It's yeah, gonna yeah. throw everything off because everybody else in the band can mess up, mm -hmm. but if the drummer mess up, it's yeah. real distinct. Exactly. You know, you can hit a wrong note, yeah, but yeah. you'll be cool. But if yeah, the drummer yeah. mess up the beat, you done messed up everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, you you have it's just a part of what you do as a as a creative. Mm -hmm. Like you work with that pressure. Yeah. Of making sure that everybody is is can can be in the pocket. Yeah. That's yeah. what's up. Yep. That's what's up, bro. Um, uh, I'm running through, bro. Like I said, because I know you got <laughs> you got 1,700 different events that you're doing. Um, anything else that we haven't touched on that you got coming up? Because I want to make sure that people are. And I should say, so for our live audience, they're going to be able to tap into these dates that are coming up. Okay. For our audience who are who are just uh, subscribers to the Cliff Notes podcast, which is available everywhere you listen to your podcast, mm -hmm. everywhere you listen to audio, things that people can tap into. Um, that are going on sort of on a regular basis. So we talked about um, the Porch Concert Series, yeah. that if people are in the city or are coming through the city, um, how can they sort of tap in to know when that's going to pop up next? Um, definitely hit me on my socials, uh, Tyrone Hendricks, you know, just, you know, H-E-N-D-R-I-X, mm -hmm. not the D-R-I-C-K-S, right. you know, if you want to right. mm -hmm. um, But definitely just, you know, watch me on my socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and all that. And, yeah. Like you said, I'm constantly always putting stuff on there. So, yes. yeah. So, you will yes. definitely know what's happening. You right. know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, like I said, the Lunch and Soul every Saturday, you mm -hmm. know, uh, the Soulful Sundays, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to bring joy to people, man. That's that's my whole that's my whole purpose. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm, I'm blessed enough to be in a position where I'm I make pretty good money mm -hmm. doing it. So, you know, I'm I'm okay. That's you know what's what I'm up, bro. I love hearing <laughs> yeah. that, dude. I love hearing that. Well, listen, bro. Like I said, I've I've enjoyed sort of watching you from a distance, watching you um, create, watching you be a part of so much of the 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 rich music scene here mm -hmm. in the city. Um, and we've had an opportunity to interact a little bit, but it's really dope to be able to have you a part of, of, of this journey, of my journey. Yeah. Um, aside from playing your records on the radio, but like to be able to like, I got your math and my number in my phone now, <laughs> bro. You know what I mean? So I can just, I can just hit you on the humbug yeah, and yes, yes. really excited to see, you know, what's, what else is coming this spring, this summer, mm -hmm. uh, from what you're doing. And, and of course, a new project that's going to drop. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, like I said, I was just... This, this music thing is just in me and you know I'm, I'm the type I like to challenge myself to keep going you know yeah, yeah. if I feel like I'm getting bored I just gotta keep moving on to the next thing so you know yeah I just this is what I love to do and it's That's just, what's this, up. Is, this is this is my this is my passion I love it bro yes. I love it okay yeah. so one of the things that that um, that I've really looked forward to in creating the Cliff Notes live series mm -hmm. is being able to connect with listeners um, and connect and having live people in the building and creating an opportunity for folk to interact, mm -hmm. you know, with my guests. So we got some people in the building. So just want to open up the open up the floor a little bit. If anybody has any questions for the amazing Tyrone Hendricks, <laughs> you know, you can. Uh, okay, we we have a question in the back back here, <laughs> gentlemen raising. <laughs> Do you think I should change that line about Kevin Samuels? I've been thinking about it. It's like, yeah, I might want to. Uh, it's some inside stuff. It's some yeah. inside stuff. <laughs> you know what? I didn't diss him. No, he didn't. It wasn't a diss. Okay. It, it, went, it wasn't nothing bad. Okay. I, I would keep it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because, I mean, you know, it's like, uh, that's a weird thing, man. It's like, I can't help you. I yeah, can do it. yeah <laughs> exactly. It's like, you've heard so many, like, weird rap beefs happen. Mm -hmm. And they're like, man, he dissed him. They're like, bro, he did that song, like, this is long ago. You right. know what I'm saying? Like right. he's you're just hearing it now. You're just hearing it now. Yeah, so yeah. it's not 
you know, but so it's like we all have to tell the story mm-hmm. about the time frame of mm-hmm. everything. But you mm-hmm. know, people just take things and run with it. So, yeah. you know, I no, nah, we'll keep we'll keep the line. <laughs> there it is, there it is. See y'all y'all getting y'all getting a little behind the scenes. This is how the creative process happens yeah. for real, for real. Yeah, because I mean some of the biggest hits you ever heard, man, they've been sitting on them hits for four or five years. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny that you say that, bro, because that's one of the things that I didn't, you know, before I was in a position to curate, mm-hmm. I didn't really realize that, you know, yeah. when you hear when you hear music. Again, I was talking to um, when I was talking to Jay earlier today. He was talking about when the JMO uh, JMO Gang album when they released it, mm-hmm. like they started writing that album literally five years before I actually heard it. Yeah, and you don't and. And I guess it's also a part, we live in a time where people have bedroom studios, so they can, oh. you know, write and release a song in a couple days. Just crank it out. But, but like, I think artistry takes time. You gotta, you have, you have to have time to massage it and let it mm-hmm. breathe a little bit before it's ready to release to the masses. Yeah. yeah and I should ask, as a creative, do you, is that something that you, like, do you, like, if you create something, are you kind of itchy, want to get it out? Or, or is it like, nah, when it's ready, it's, it's, it's coming? It's all in the timing. Yeah. You know, some stuff you're just like, all right, I got to get this idea out right now. Yeah, yeah. Then some ideas you just may sit on for a long time. Yeah. Because you just don't know what to do with it at that particular time. Yeah, yeah. Then you may get inspired and be like, okay, now I know what direction to go with this song. Mm-hmm. And you just roll with it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it all depends on what the direction, kind of where your headspace is at at the time. No doubt. Because you know? things, I mean, you've heard stories of producers like, man, I had this idea for this mm-hmm. and then this happened. Yep. And I flipped it this way. Yep. You know? um, yep. I love hearing the stories of like, uh, uh, Dr. Dre and like the 50 Cent uh, the uh, doom, boom. the in the club joint yeah that yeah. wasn't meant for him word that was meant for like two other artists okay and they just never like took advantage of it like yeah and then just so happened boom here he is so that was the way it was meant to go that's that's <laughs> that's crazy and that is a story that you do hear um, it's funny I was, I, I was talking to OG1 about mm-hmm. the, his project that he released Testimony he was like yeah I sent this beat to somebody else and they never rhymed on it so yeah Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, bro. Um, any other any other questions from the audience? Here we go. Yeah, I have a question. And being a DJ, I hear music differently. Mm-hmm. Being a drummer, do you hear music differently? Do you listen for different things? Do you listen for things that, that they could have done better? What do you like? What do you like the drum pattern of your music? Because it changes the way I hear songs now being a DJ. So I imagine you, being a producer and a drummer, it's got to be impactful like that. Um, it, it all depends, but I mean, I'm kind of like, this, if the song was meant to go that way, it was meant to go that way, and it rolls. But definitely on stage, I'm definitely hearing things all the time. Like, you can, you can see the way I'd be directing the band. I'd be like, all right, I heard this hit. Let's do this. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, y'all, watch you. I'd be like, watch me. I'm about to do something, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I keep, I keep them guys on their toes. <laughs> but they, the cool thing is, they love it. Some guys, they just want to stay comfortable with mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the dudes I'm playing with, they like, they love it. They're like, man, it's a challenge. Like, it's cool. And yeah. it's fun. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's what's Because my thing is, music, we have this perfection thing about music. And I'm like, music is not supposed to be perfect. Mm-hmm. It's an imperfect thing. It's like basketball. Basketball's not, basketball's not perfect. Right, it's going right. to be turnovers and things of that nature. You're trying to perfect something that's not going to be perfected. Yeah, yeah. Now, we do practice our craft to get there. Mm-hmm. But it's just moments that always happen with live music. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. Motown is still timeless. Right. And they speeding up, slowing down. If you was taking things away, you're hearing rim, different rim shots and wrong notes and all type of stuff. But you you don't notice it until right. they strip everything away. But right. in the midst of it, it's killing. Yeah. You know, and people yeah. are still playing all that stuff to this day. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, you still hear Motown, you don't really hear Britney Spears. Come on. I'm just saying. Come on. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. Tyrone that's not, that's not, it's that's not a diss. It's not a diss, but yeah, it's just it's just facts. Yeah. It is what it is. Motown is Motown. Yes, sir. You know, Stevie is Stevie. Yes, know? sir. <laughs> so, Rick James, like Rick James is like my favorite of all time. Okay, word. I've been I've been dabbing into him. I'm like, Rick James is deep. Yeah. Like I didn't realize he was like with what Bob what was it? Bob Dylan or somebody mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. I didn't know he was doing all that stuff. I'm yeah. like, whoa, this yeah. is amazing. Yeah. And he was in Canada doing music. I'm like, Rick James was in Canada? Yeah. Like, yeah, when you dig into it, you get to hear, you know, when we're when we're consumers of 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 of, of content, mm-hmm. unless we make the choice to dig in a little bit deeper, there is so much there that we don't know, right? Yeah. Because whatever is popular is what's is yeah. what's in our face. Like like Jimmy was guitar player for the Isaac Brothers. I know when I heard that, I was like, okay. Yeah, people don't, a lot of people don't know that. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, that's yeah. so dope. When his first tours was with the Isaac Brothers. That's crazy, like, bro. Wow. That's crazy. Yes. Is there anyone that you haven't worked with that you want to? 
Oh, the one artist I will say I definitely wanted to work with was Seal. Oh, I word. I think Seal is dope. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so you know, you, we put that out there. We're going to have our people work on that. <laughs> make that. <laughs> that would be yeah. crazy, yeah, bro. Yeah. That would be crazy. Yeah. And it's, it, I think it's cool to, to know an artist of your caliber who, someone who's done what you've done, that mm-hmm. you still have artists that you like, yo, I'd love to do something with this person and with mm-hmm. that person. Yeah. Well, I tell people all the time, one of my favorite genres of music is actually like old school country. Okay. Because it was the, the writing was crazy. Okay. Yeah, I listened to the lyrics for that stuff. This is yeah, they were writing some songs. And then some of the biggest R and B hits are yeah, basically old country songs. Yeah, yeah <laughs> they just flipped true. it. That's, but, there's, yeah. there's some to that. There's absolutely some to that. <laughs> um, brother man, I once again, I'm I'm just uh, just thank you. I'm very grateful for you taking time oh, no to come through and to be a part be a part of the the live experience, man. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one more time, man, let people know how to tap in with you. As people are listening to this and, and they're hearing some things that they want to be a part of or be involved in, how can people tap in with you? Uh, just basically, like I said, just tap in you know, Tyrone Hendrix, T Y R O N E H E N D R I X, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'm all there. I have a website, TyroneHendrix.com. Mm-hmm. You can go there. Uh, I, I've been doing my PDX Soul shirts, they've been doing real good. So you can purchase those on there. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man, it's, yeah, this, that's what's up. This, this living a life. I'm not too hard to find. I'm always, <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. Ladies and gentlemen, help me uh, welcome one more time Tyrone Hendrix. Thank you. Thank you. All right, dude. What's funny, I'm heading to another gig right now. <laughs> right. I believe the, it. Going to the good foot right now. I believe it, bro. <laughs> I'm going to uh, throw it to my guy, DJ Ambush, and we're going to have our next guest up in just a minute right here on Cliff Notes Live. Y'all don't go nowhere. All right. Thank you.